You know what's frustrating? Knowing where a huge quantity of gold is, and being completely unable to get to it. And this video will show you exactly where this phenomenon is occurring. Come with me on a journey across the Western District Volcanic Plains, one of the largest volcanic plains on Earth, stretching from Melbourne's west through Geelong and all the way to Hamilton. Beneath this flat, fertile landscape lies a hidden world. Ancient rivers long gone from the surface that once ran rich with gold. Today they are locked away under vast sheets of basalt, the remains of enormous lava flows that smothered valleys millions of years ago. And here's the kicker, almost no one has ever properly explored them. Very few modern companies have drilled through the basalt to sample the ancient gravels. This means the gold sitting under the landscape has been untouched for thousands of years, and it's still there, waiting. But how can I be so sure that an enormous amount of gold exists below the surface? Well, we need only look at the geology of the area and the historical mining reports. Volcanic eruptions began in Victoria within the past 6 million years. Prior to that, the Western District was very similar, geologically speaking, to the gold fields north of it. Now the old miners weren't dumb. They knew that beneath the massive amount of lava here lies gold. They worked it far south, almost to the town of Cresy, and after that, nothing. This was the southernmost mine in the district the Great Western and Wodea Lake Junction Co. As you can see, the mine wasn't too far from Lake Martin and the other volcanic lakes. In a report on Trove, it stated that they dug to a depth of 200 feet, which is about 61 meters below the surface, where they found dark brown clay containing freshwater shells. If we look on Geovic, we can see that mines operated along these deep leads, which is the Australian term for a gold-rich buried river channel. But the Great Western and Wadia Lake Junction Co. operated south of where the documented deep lead quote unquote ends. So they knew that beneath the basalt here, gold was present in the former river channels that were since buried beneath volcanic lava. Not much is known about this mine. What is known is that they commenced operation sometime in the early 1860s. Now as you can see, there are very clearly two buried rivers that have been chased to a certain point. They're running south from here and here. And you can bet they do not stop here. So this begs the question, why didn't the miners continue chasing it? There are a few reasons that could explain why and we'll get into that shortly. So prior to the volcanic eruptions, broad golden rivers once coursed across here. Water flowed from the ancient highlands, carrying silt, gravel and gold across this landscape. These streams meandered from the uplands toward the sea in the south, depositing rich alluvial gold in their beds and bends. Then came the eruptions. They poured out from hundreds of eruption points flowing like molten rivers into the low valleys. Flat lava fields spread from Melbourne to Hamilton, cooling into hard basalt rock that entombed the old stream beds beneath. Most volcanic lava flows were relatively thin, but over time they filled entire valleys up to 50 to 60 meters deep, sealing ancient gold-bearing gravels under an impenetrable cap of rock. The result was a vast, windswept volcanic plain, deceptively flat and featureless, hiding a dramatic secret below its soils. In the early days, prospectors had little reason to stop on these seemingly barren flats. The gold was there, but buried far below thick lava rock that they couldn't easily penetrate. Miners of the 19th century focused on easier pickings, flocking to accessible alluvial fields and reef outcrops. In areas where ancient leads ran under basalt, prospectors would sometimes trace a rich gully or creek to the point where it vanished beneath a layer of bluestone lava. Yet the lure of those hidden riches did not go entirely unnoticed. By the 1860s, geologists understood that tremendous wealth lay in the buried auriferous river deposits of Victoria. They realized that many ancient valleys filled with gold had been covered by newer rocks. An influential 1907 paper observed that the quantity of buried auriferous gravels which exist in Victoria is enormous, but the amount of their actual development has been infinitesimal. In other words, only a tiny fraction of the gold trapped under lava had been won. Miners in the 19th century simply couldn't reach most of it, Lacking the costly deep shafts, heavy-duty pumps and advanced methods required to tunnel through thick basalt and manage the underground water in those buried riverbeds. After a few bold attempts, even some well-funded companies halted when confronted with the Western Plains basalt barrier. Thus, as the surface gold ran out elsewhere, an untold fortune remained stranded beneath the volcanic plain, known to science but just out of reach. But here's the thing, this region is just as old and is built on the same Ordovician bedrock that lies beneath the goldfields to the north. It's likely the ground here holds the same degree of gold enrichment as the exposed country beyond the lava's reach. 
Beneath the basalt could be gold-rich quartz reefs, placer deposits and alluvial fields identical in origin to those that made the northern goldfields famous. For the past 6 million years those riches have been hidden under successive lava flows, but below that dark volcanic cap lie original, unworked goldfields, born from the same erosion of auriferous quartz reefs as their counterparts to the north. Standing on the western district plain today you'd never guess what lies below. The land is a patchwork of grazing paddocks and stony rises dotted by the occasional extinct volcanic cone on the horizon. Underfoot however is solid basalt rock, nature's concrete, tens of metres thick in many places. This rock sealed away the ancient river channels like a time capsule. For would-be gold explorers, the basalt cover is a formidable adversary. But this isn't the only reason mining did not occur here as the western district had another major problem, water. As you can see the land is dominated by volcanic lakes. The water table is shallow when groundwater flooding was absolutely a major limiting factor and it likely played the single biggest role in stopping further exploration southwards. The district sits at one of the lowest points of the Victorian volcanic plain, almost at lake level. The way to your low creek system drains into Lake Karangamite and the land in that stretch is barely above the lake's surface elevation. This means the regional water table is at or near the surface for much of the year, and sinking a shaft here, even into the overlying basalt, would almost immediately intersect saturated ground. On top of this, salt river valleys under the basalt often act as confined aquifers. The gravel layers are highly permeable, and the overlying basalt traps and pressurizes the groundwater. When shafts are sunk into these gravels, the water doesn't just seep in, it can rush in under pressure quickly flooding workings. Adding to this was a hard limit. In the late 19th century, steam powered pumps could only lift so much water. These challenges meant that vast areas of the western district remained untouched by the gold rush. The plains from Geelong all the way west to Hamilton saw little mining compared to the booming diggings elsewhere. Today, a century and a half after the first gold rush, those long forgotten treasures under the western district still beckon. The frustration and intrigue that opened our story, there's gold here, known but inaccessible, might finally meet its resolution. Modern science and technology are now peeling back the veil on these hidden gold leads. In recent years, researchers have begun mapping the ancient buried rivers using sophisticated methods. Seismic surveys, much like an ultrasound of the earth, can detect the old valley shapes buried in the rock. Magnetics and gravity surveys can subtly hint at where heavier basalt gives way to lighter gravels below. Even groundwater bore data from farmers' wells have provided clues. Occasional drill holes bring up rounded river pebbles or specks of gold, betraying the presence of an old stream bed below the basalt. Where the old timers could only guess, modern geologists can model entire Paleo River systems on a computer, tracing where the gold bearing gravels likely extend across the plains. Most importantly, drilling technology has leapt forward. Rigs can now bore through hard basalt far more efficiently. Across Victoria, explorers are revisiting deep leads that were abandoned at the basalt's edge. With careful, responsible exploration, Victoria's hidden leads could be uncovered in the coming years, rewriting what we know about the state's golden wealth. It won't be easy, the western plains are keeping their gold on their own terms, demanding patience and ingenuity to unlock. But the story is far from over. I hope you found this as interesting as I did, and as always, thanks for watching. Before I end this video I'd like to give a big shout out to my Patreon and YouTube members. Thank you so much to everyone that helps to support this channel.